Springboks are currently basking in their 2023 Rugby World Cup winning glory. South Africa making history on this day a week ago when they clinched a record fourth Rugby World title and this was at the expense of their arch rivals New Zealand. The box triumph has attracted global attention for the 33 men who conquered France and, as we saw after the 2019 success, a number of the boys will probably be gaining the attention of big brands. The likes of Faf de Clark in his very famous Speedo, Sia Colisi, of course, with his very bright white teeth, and Magazole Mapimpi as well, have been the faces of some notable brands over the last four years. Now, the players' focus is mostly on the game of rugby, so who handles those brand endorsements while they polish up on their scrums, their lineouts, their drop goals? Well, joining us now to answer that very important question is businesswoman and chief executive officer of Unorthodox Group, the company that handles these endorsement deals for Mapimpi, Lucanio Am, and Jaden Hendrickser, among others. Uh, a very good morning to you. Uh, of course, uh, Miss Smabalwe uh, Sesmani, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I can imagine just how tough it has been over the last four years mm. handling endorsements for some of the greatest names in rugby and how challenging, if not exciting, it'll be mm. the next four years mm. as they are the world champions. You know, when you're looking at Magazola Mapimpi, Lucanio Am, you're looking at a Faf de Clark, you're looking at a Jaden Hendrickson mm. who is coming into his mm. first World Cup, mm. you know, as a Springbok. Brands are looking at them right now and thinking, history makers definitely that's going to look amazing definitely. for our brand definitely um it has been challenging over the past four years because south africa has had a lot of catching up to do mm. um so if you look internationally the u.s always does it great example nfl players we all know they get their endorsement deals but in south africa slowly but surely we have gotten there um we have a very traditional marketing model still uh, which bases it on i think what we've seen billboards adverts but not necessarily attaching to a persona but now we are starting to see more and more of that as also the value chain of sport is expanding so much. So it is getting a lot easier to get some of these deals because they see the value in attaching themselves also with the right brand. But also the players themselves need to know what they want because it is a partnership between the players and the brands as well. How important has the introduction to the South African sporting sphere has Rock Nation sports because when you think Rock Nation, you think Jay Z. When you think Jay Z, you think dollar currency, you yeah. think big brands, you think yeah. money. How important yeah. have those guys been in breaking into this sporting industry and mm. in making sure that that traditional, very safe, cautious kind of you know advertising mm. approach and brand endorsement approach mm. has now been taken to another level? Where mm. when you talk Michael Jordan, mm. you talk Nike. Yes. You know when you talk you know a solo with Hamilton, you're talking Puma. Mm. You know when you're talking Lionel Messi, you're talking mm. Adidas. Mm. But when you talk South African athletes, mm. you don't align them to any kind of brand. How yes. important are Rock Nation in ensuring that when you talk Sia Kolisi, mm. you're talking any big brand in the world? Mm. So Rock Nation, our competitor <laughs> in South Africa, yeah. I think their presence, because you're all right, people associate um, Rock Nation with Jay-Z. Mm. So their presence actually, I think, got a lot of people to wake up and say, hey, we're actually moving in this direction as well. Because they're mostly known for music, but the fact that they invested in Africa, but not only in Africa, but in our own South African talent, mm. I think it also just woke up the players to say, hey, I actually have marketing value. If this guy can do it, maybe I can also do it. Mm. it um, they woke up to their own brands, the value of their brands mm. and what they can do outside of rugby. Because actually, if that card is played right by going and getting endorsement deals, mm. you're almost securing your future as well. You're starting to plan for mm. retirement, which is what we do for our athletes from the get-go when we sign them. We already start planning for retirement. What longevity can I get from this? What's sustainable? Um, because also athletes, you're lucky enough if you retire, you get yeah. to retirement age at any point in time. You know, look at our athletes that we have. They're injury prone uh, based on the positions that they play. Mm. So we can't not have a retirement plan for them. Should this happen and you're completely out, not out for six weeks, completely out, what are we then going to do? So we don't manage them from a brand endorsement perspective, but we also try as much as we can tap into how the athlete thinks, mm. what they want, what they like, what their interests are, and see how do we then create something sustainable that when they retire or should they get injured, they can actually go into that. So the presence of Rock Nation, the presence of an orthodox yes. group, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> has made a lot of athletes aware that actually there's so many streams of income I can capitalize on now, but also mm. use later on at a later stage in my life or the second phase of their lives. So Babalo Sismani doesn't handle player contracts, yes? No. Sbabalo Sismani handles endorsement deals. Brand there is endorsement a deals. There's a difference between the two where you've got a football agent who handles the contract, who moves, player, who moves Sia from this club to that club. Accurate. You deal with 
mostly, you know, the, the advertising part of it, the marketing mm. part of it, the brand the part of it, yes? Yes, accurate. So, yeah, there, there has been like a bit of a, people think that I'm an agent. No, I'm not. Mm. Um, I don't know anything. We might go into it in the future. Who knows? Yeah. But for now, I think uh, because we started off as a PR company, we're still a PR company, mm. that's the other wing, it was then easier to transition into this because we know how to package companies mm. and we see our clients as companies. So we know how to package them, we know how to tell a story, and we know how to sell them. What, what, how, how helpful has Magazole Mabimbi's story after 2019 been? You know, it's, it's a story that brought tears to Rasi mm. Rasmus. It is a story that brought tears to South Africans. Do you leverage off of a heartbreaking story like that? Do you leverage off of a rags to riches kind mm. of story? Or is that uh, what, what a lot of people will call poverty porn? Mm. So I think those stories are important to tell because they do give kids hope. You know, just because I'm in this situation doesn't mean that I cannot get out of it, even though it looks dire. So from a hope perspective, I think that's important. But there also needs to be a cap. We can't be telling that story when Magazole is 43. Yeah. He's got a foundation now, for instance. There are other things that um, he, he's currently busy with and doing outside of rugby. So telling the story because you don't know who you are inspiring. And in South Africa, unfortunately, his story is not really that special, the mm. poverty side of it. Yes. You know, because obviously of the country that we live in, a lot of disparities and equality, quite a bit of poverty. So those stories are important, but you need to cap it at some point and say, now that I've gotten here, mm. what story am I telling going forward? You're sitting, you know, across from one of the biggest brands in the world, and you're sitting with a Rugby World Cup winner, Jerin Hendrickson, Magazole Mapimpilu Kanyo Ame, maybe, you know, other Rugby World Cup winners that I would imagine you will have gone all the way to France to try and bring into your stable, but you're trying to put one of them out there and attach them to a huge brand that is essentially going to set them up for the rest of their lives. I'm that brand. Take me through what it is you say to a brand as big as I am when you're trying to put your player, your client, with them. So with us, when you sign on with us, we've got a questionnaire because we're trying to get to know you, mm. trying to get to know the person. The essence is so important because we don't just go to brands and we also don't accept every offer that we get. There needs to be a level of authenticity. Mm. That's then how you can stay with a brand for 10 years. Again, Magazole is an example. Um, I think we are now third or second year, no, no, third year, renewing our contract with Tweezer. If you look at the timeline from when Tisa was started and Makasole started getting into rugby, it actually coincides. Mm. There was some uh, a point in time where the brand um, sponsored one of the teams that he was playing in to mm. get to that point now. So for us, it's also, that's a partly Eastern Cape product, mm. but now it's being sold nationally. So for us, authenticity is so important. We will always look for a brand that aligns with the player, their personality. Um, do you like the product? Have mm. you used the product before? Because you will give more to a product. I mean, just imagine you really love um, a, a brand and then they come to you to work with them. Yeah. It feels like a dream come true. So you will pour into that brand mm. and they will see it. That's how the consistency comes in. That's how the longevity comes in. But the one thing that we is so, so important to us is authenticity. Mm. The difficulties of selling a player that nobody knows. Now, you've gone and signed an up-and-coming star, mm. up-and-coming star in his own club, you mm. know, in his own little region. But mm. He, you can see it because mm. that's something that you need to do as well as a yes. PR specialist Correct. is you need to notice talent that a lot Correct. of people don't notice. You need to notice something that you can sell to big brands. Just talk Correct. to me about the difficulties of putting an athlete out there that mm. nobody knows. So first of all, it's, I always say to my clients, it's, it's a partnership. You're not going to sit back. Mm. We are going to do this together. So we also need a level of proactiveness. Um, we've been very fortunate to have clients that are very proactive and yeah. very invested in their brands. You know, I don't know how we did that. I think it's a lot of prayers, but yeah. you know, I'll get um, texts at 2 a.m. saying, when you wake up, you know, this is the idea that I had. So it's very, with an unknown player, they have to be proactive. Even pros are proactive, yeah. but you need to take yourself seriously first. Be proactive, um, try and look at avenues, any interests. So from there, we now build a story around you. It is quite, um, for an unknown athlete, um, quite a, a journey, mm. and that requires a lot of patience because possibly in the first six to 12 months, you're not getting anything, but you're doing all of these media interviews. Mm. But also, if you see the value in the services that we provide in our strategy, mm. that we work with, with you, by the way, then um, it'll be a good partnership. But a lot of patience is required, both from the PR specialist and also from the athlete.
We've spoken at length about the inspiration of these athletes and their stories and what it is um, you know, they are doing for a nation, but we have not touched, and I'm going to steal some time to try and touch on it as well very quickly, the inspiration of a young black woman that is running a business you know, that is male-dominated, white male-dominated, and you are sitting with world champions in your stable. Just you, as Babalo Sesmani, the importance of what it is you're doing for the greater good of the young black woman. So it's, it's not easy. I think just as a woman, even if you are any race in the sports world, um, both on and off the field, yeah. um, and then add that uh, to being a young black woman. So there's ageism, um, there's race, and then there's also gender dynamics that you have to navigate. That's where your clients play such a big role in saying that um, this is who we believe in and we are staying with her. So it's, it's back to my point. It really is a partnership between do you believe that I can handle your brand? Do you trust me with your brand, number one? And then I will then manage um, the dynamics. Having World Cup, two times World Cup winners in my stable um, does make it a bit easier in the sense that there's a level of respect, but also it's a very highly monopolized industry. So you will ruffle feathers. We did ruffle feathers. We're still ruffling feathers. Um, but it's just all about the grit and also just showing the young black girl from M Tanzan, I'm from M Tanzan, mm. that you can actually do it and creating opportunities as well. Because if I'm now in that space, it means I need to be intentional about creating more representation. Mm. So who am I bringing into that space so that it can truly showcase the demographics of South Africa? I look forward to seeing in your stable a uh, more World Cup, Rugby World Cup winning uh, players, more Cricket World Cup winning players, because we are going to win this Cricket World Cup just by the yeah. way, and of course, more <laughs> AFCON winning players from Bafana Bafana, because we're winning that as well yeah. next year. So, Babalo, thank you so much. Truly inspirational, your story. Uh, m bigger can an orthodox uh, group grow. May you also grow as a leader in this industry, and may you continue to ruffle those feathers and break those boundaries. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so to much ENC, for having me. Sibabalo Sesmani, the group CEO of Unorthodox Group. She, of course, in her stable has got Magazole Mapimpi, Luke Kanyo Am, Jaden Hendrickson, as well as Ubabalo Lache. You know that history-making Springbok captain, Springbok women's captain? Yes, that's who she's got in her stable, and she's going to have a whole lot more superstars to come. You will be hearing a lot more about Unorthodox Group. Remember that name.